What's going on, YouTube? This is SG1 Sports, and you're watching our college football channel. We continue with our 2023 schedule preview projected record series. The Ole Miss Rebels are up next. Before we get to 2023, let's look back at 2022. Here was the schedule from 2022 for Ole Miss. You can see they played Troy, Central Arkansas, Georgia Tech, and Tulsa in the non-conference, so not a very tough uh, non-conference schedule really there for them. And then you look at who they played out of the East. They played Kentucky and Vanderbilt, so they didn't have to play Georgia, didn't have to play Tennessee. It wound up being a pretty easy schedule, and that's really why they get, a big reason why they got off to that 7-0 start is because the schedule just was not all that tough. Uh, it did get tougher late in the season with LSU on the road, Alabama, of course, at Arkansas on the road, a game they lost, lost the Egg Bowl. Uh, did get that win over Texas A&M, so kept it from being a complete collapse late in the year. Uh, but that schedule was definitely much easier in the first half than in the second half uh, back in 2022. Let's look at who they play outside of the division in 2023. They will play Mercer, Tulane, Georgia Tech, and Louisiana Monroe. So a little bit tougher non-conference schedule here because of that game against Tulane. Not only did they play them, they play them on the road. And this is a team that most people have had in their top 25. They're way too early top 25s. I'm bringing their quarterback back. Uh, this is a, a team that went to you know beat USC just this past season in a New Year's Six Bowl. So this will be a good team. This will be a good test. Um, I don't know. Ole Miss might actually be underdogs in that game. So that is a big one there. And then Georgia Tech playing a Power Five opponent. Uh, that, that's a team that finished pretty strong last year. So we'll see what they look like. And then you look at who they play out of the East. They'll play Vanderbilt. They play them every year. And then they'll play Georgia. So you get the tough draw this year. You got to go on the road to Athens. Uh, you know, the good news for Ole Miss is they always get to play Vanderbilt out of the East. But the bad news is this year they have the absolute toughest possible game as their other game because it is a road game against Georgia. And, of course, with the divisions going away, um, soon we'll see maybe these schedules will, ch will change a little bit as far as who you play every year. I don't know if Ole Miss will continue to play Vanderbilt every year or not, but it's definitely an advantage for them playing the team that is usually the worst team out of the East every single year. Uh, but again, a tough draw for that other team this year playing Georgia. So let's go week by week. They will open up with Mercer on September the 2nd. And then there's Tulane on the road week two. That is actually a huge game, potentially a top 25 matchup uh, when those two go at it. Uh, that, that one's going to be a lot of fun. And then they follow that up with Georgia Tech the next week. So remember the schedule. It was easy early and then got tough late. Uh, that's really not the case this year because look after Georgia Tech, they play in the month of September on the road at Alabama and then LSU. So by the time you, you get through that first month of the season through September, you've already had to play Tulane on the road, Alabama on the road, a Power 5 opponent in Georgia Tech, and then LSU. That is a tough, tough start to the season. Uh, after after Mercer, those next four games are going to be very tough. And, and it doesn't really get a whole lot easier after that because you still have to get through some quality teams in the SEC. They'll play Arkansas the next week. That'll be a home game. That'll be a must win. When you look at the schedule, Ole Miss has to win uh, home games against in games that they can win. They have got to win those games. Uh, so we'll see if they can knock off Arkansas. And then they get a bye week. So it's right there in the middle of the season. Uh, they'll get a bye week after Arkansas. Then it's a road game against Auburn. Now that's going to be fun. Hugh Freeze playing Ole Miss. And, you know, we just don't know what to expect from Auburn at this point. They've added a lot of players in the transfer portal. They could wind up being a good team next year. Or they might, you know, it might take some time. They might be uh, just an average team once again. So we'll see. But that that's a tough place to play. Uh, the good news again for Ole Miss is they get a bye week before that game. And then they get Vanderbilt. So it's a little easier here after the bye week. They get Vanderbilt at home. And then it's Texas A&M at home. Uh, the Aggies, a talented team, but they lost a lot of guys in the transfer portal uh, and had, a, you know, of course, a disastrous season this past year. So that one will be interesting. Uh, that's a game, you know, you look at Arkansas, Vanderbilt, Texas A&M. Those are games that almost really needs to win at home. And then it's Georgia after that on November 11th on the road in Athens. Going to obviously be a very, very tough game. And then they'll play Louisiana Monroe and finish things out with Mississippi State. In the Egg Bowl, this time on the road. 
in what is always one of the best games of the year, it seems like. Uh, this year should be a good one as well. So again, big picture looking at this schedule. Yeah, they have no back-to-back -back road games. That's a positive. Uh, several back-to-back -back home games. You get LSU and Arkansas back-to-back -back at home. Vanderbilt, Texas A&M back-to-back -back at home. Uh, so you like the way the schedule sets up as far as the home and away. You got a very tough stretch again early in the year. And, and just looking at back-to-backs, Alabama and LSU back-to-back, -back, that is brutal right there. Texas A&M and Georgia back-to-back -back is going to be very tough. Uh, this is a pretty tough schedule. It's a pretty tough schedule, given the fact that they don't play any big-time Power 5 non-conference opponent and the fact that they get to play Vanderbilt. You know, usually Ole Miss does have one of the easier schedules in the conference, but this year uh, it's going to be tough because they do have that two-lane game on the road and then Georgia Tech, another Power 5 opponent, like I said, uh, that they'll play in the non-conference. So you've got your, your eight SEC games, then another Power 5 opponent in Georgia Tech, and then Tulane, not a Power 5 team, but uh, they're, again, possibly going to be a top 25 team. You play them on the road. So that makes for uh, 10 very quality games right there uh, on the schedule. It's going to be a difficult one, I think, for Ole Miss in 2023. Here were some of the projections for Ole Miss last season. Uh, you see, they were 8-4. and four. Our projection had them at 8-4. and four. I picked them to go 8-4. and four. The FBI had them right around 8-4. and four. The over-under, 7.5, uh, so 7-5, 8-4. Really, this team did what everyone expected them to do last year. They were right there with the projections. You know, they did they, they, they did go over the, the over-under there from Vegas. So, you know, that I guess they, they beat those expectations a little bit. Uh, but really, with 7.5, with it was either 7-5 and five or 8-4. and four. Uh, so 8-4 and four the projection, 8-4 and four is what they were last season. Let's see what the projection looks like for 2023. It's a tricky, tricky schedule. Again, here is that schedule. This is the scale that we'll be using. Games that are under 20%, over 80%, those are games where I think the spread will be 20 or more. 20 to 29, 71 to 80, games where I think the spread will be double digits, 10 to 19. 30 to 39, 61 to 70, those are games where I think the spread will be around a touchdown, 6, 7, 8, 9 points. And then you got your 50-50 games. Those will stay in the white. Those are games where I think the spread will be uh, five points or less. Let's just put it that way. So the, really, those are the games that could go either way. And we do go really conservative with this. You know, it's very early. The, we're not, you know, we don't know for sure how good all these teams are going to be. But this does just kind of give you a projection based off of how tough the schedule is. So we'll start with the easy wins. You've got Mercer, ULM. Uh, those are games where Ole Miss should be favored by more than 20 points. Uh, really, no doubt about either one of those games. They should roll. And again, those games should not be close at all. Then you go to the games in the blue. And again, these are games where I think the spread will be double digits. I think Georgia Tech, uh, that's one where Ole Miss will probably be favored by a couple of touchdowns. Georgia Tech did, did finish pretty well last year. You know, finished strong in the, late in the season. Uh, but the game is at Ole Miss. They won easily last year. This is an Ole Miss team that, that could potentially be better this year with some transfers they brought in. Um, yeah, I think Ole Miss will be favored by double digits. And there may be some other games here. You know, maybe Vanderbilt, they wind up favored by 14 in that game. Again, we don't know how good Vanderbilt's going to be. It's just, it's so hard to say this early. You just kind of have to look at how the teams were last year and, and then look at what they have coming back. But I think Vanderbilt probably goes in the, in the purple here again very close to putting them in the blue but you just look at the way they finished last season they were able to get a couple of big sec wins uh, this is i don't know if you call it a rivalry it is the cross division matchup they play every year uh, so, so this one has been close in the past we've seen that but yeah it's home game for Ole miss <clears throat> you like to say that they probably take care of business here and win this one easily but I don't think you can just, just automatically put this one in the blue. You know, it could be where the spread's eight or nine points. Uh, again, very, very tough call there. I'll tell you what, though. If we put it in the blue, it does not change the projection. So keep that in mind. Uh, they would still have the same projected record uh, regardless of where you put this game. So, yeah, I'm going to say that, that we'll put it in the purple for now just because of the way Vanderbilt finished last season. Some, you know, Ole Miss maybe with some question marks on defense. Maybe that spread is eight or nine points. And then you've got the, the games where they'll be underdogs. I think you've got Alabama and Georgia. They will be double-digit underdogs in both of these games. It's not just Alabama and Georgia, but it's also the fact that they played them on the road. That makes that very tough. So I think they're going to be 
you know, probably about a 13, 14 point underdog against Alabama, maybe 17, 16, 17 points against Georgia. Clearly, double digit underdogs, I think, in both of those games. And I think they'll also be a clear underdog against LSU. LSU figures to be a top five, at least top 10 team this year. It is at Ole Miss, so that makes that one in the yellow instead of the orange for me. But I still think that LSU will be a clear favorite. They'll be favored by eight or nine points in that one. And then you look at the rest of the schedule here. Tulane, you know, they're a preseason top 25 team. More than likely, that game is on the road. You look at Arkansas, who beat them last year. You look at Auburn on the road, tough place to play. Hugh Freeze may have them playing much better this year. We'll see. Texas A&M, a very talented team. The Egg Bowl is always close. So I think all six of these games, or all five of these games, I should say, all of them are 50-50 games. These are all games that could go either way. You know, if, if I had to say, I think Ole Miss might be a slight favorite in maybe all of these games. I think they will be against Tulane, Arkansas at home, Auburn. It depends on how good Auburn is. Texas A&M is at home, so they'll probably be a slight favorite there. Uh, Mississippi State, if, if they turn out to be pretty good, they'll almost probably be an underdog in that one because it's on the road. But again, I think the spreads for all these games will be very low, three, four, five points, unless one of these teams turns out to be a lot better or a lot worse than we expect. And so, yeah, you just kind of group them all together and say that these are 50-50 games, games that could go either way. So when you do this, you break it all down, you get the projected record here. We count uh, Georgia Tech, Mercer, ULM, count those as wins. Alabama and Georgia counted as losses. LSU, we use 35% for that game, 65% for Vanderbilt. Everything else is in the white, so we use 50%. You could really just put LSU and Vandy both in the white as well because everything, you know, it would average out to where all these games are 50-50 games. And when you do that, you get a projection of 7-5. Seven 7-5 and five. Seven and five is the projection. It was actually right at 6.5 wins, so we rounded it up to 7-5. and five. Uh, but yeah, because of this schedule, because of Tulane in the non-conference, because of Georgia out of the East, uh, this is a very tough schedule. And the projection would actually say that Ole Miss is more likely to go six and six than eight and four. Um, not that Ole Miss is you know projected to be any worse than they were last year. It's just because of this schedule. This is a very tough schedule. Again, Tulane and Georgia Tech in the non-conference. Then you have to play Georgia out of the East. Makes for a tough game. I guess the good news is at least you get Vandy out of the East. That's your other game. You know, you don't have to play Georgia and Tennessee or something like that. Uh, but again, averaging all the numbers out, Ole Miss, 7-5. That's the projection for 2023.